Today's topic is called Don't Go Back. Friends, this is such an important topic. It's um, a, a basic teaching, but we all need it. Because how many of you know that when we are waiting, that is when temptation comes into our lives. The temptation to go back, the temptation to try to control everything and just make things happen in our own time. You know, the temptation to just walk away from the Lord because he's taking too long. I've heard that one so many times. And so we need to remind ourselves not to go back. Maybe you're here today and you've been waiting. Maybe it's two years. Maybe you've been single for five years or maybe even for 10 years. You know, however long you've been waiting, it is never, um, there's, it's never a good idea to go back just because you've been waiting X amount of time. You know, what waiting does is waiting actually reveals a couple things about your heart. Waiting reveals, number one, do you trust God? You know, because if, if you trust God, then you're just going to continue to wait because you believe that he is good and that he's going to come through for you. And number two, it reveals, do you value yourself? See, because so often when we are waiting, we just go, oh, you know what? It's taking too long. I'm just going to go and I'm going to date this guy because he's available and he's pursuing me. Yeah, but that guy isn't even a man of God or, you know, that woman is posting some pretty crazy pictures on Instagram and you know she's like half naked and it's like the, I thought you wanted to wait for a God-ordained marriage but you're settling see because the people that you date it always reveals how you see yourself and so if you're in this waiting period and you're like I'm just gonna settle that actually reveals how you see yourself because you don't see yourself as valuable and you don't see yourself as worthy enough to wait for the right person who is going to love you the way that Jesus loves you, who's going to inspire you, who's going to challenge you, who's going to serve God with you, who's going to persevere with you. See, the person that God has for you is worth the wait. So it's never a good idea to go back. You know, I was uh, really focusing in on the children of Israel lately and my goodness, it just blows my mind because, see, they were in this land of slavery in Egypt for over 400 years, and the Lord heard their cries. See, they were in this land like, God, help us. We don't want to be here anymore, and God heard their prayers, and God delivered them from the land of Egypt. He sent Moses to take them out, and here they see... Um, all of these crazy plagues that the Lord put on Egypt and it shows how powerful and how miraculous God is. He parted the Red Sea so that they could just walk right through it. I mean, these the children of Israel saw some truly incredible miracles of God. And so after they leave the land of Egypt and they're walking to this promised land, God says, I'm going to give you a promised land that overflows with milk and honey. Well, during this time, you know, they face some hardships. And I want to take you into the book of Numbers so that you can read with me um, what they what they actually say. And so let's go to the book of Numbers. We're going to go to Numbers chapter 14. Right here, we're going to go verse 2 through 4. And it says this, If only we had died in the land of Egypt, or if only we had died in the wilderness, why has the Lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword that our wives and children should become victims? Would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? Right there. Would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? Does that kind of remind you of maybe some things that you've gone through? Like, I've been single for so long. Would it not be better for me to just return to my ex? I've been single for so long. Would it not be... Uh would, would not be better for me to return to that person who mistreated me or abused me just so I just don't have to be alone? Like, would it not be better if I just leave the Lord and just settle for somebody? No, that is not a good idea. The Lord delivered you 
from that life. And God has someone great for you. Just like the children of Israel, it would never have been better for them to return to the land of slavery. Sure, on their journey to the promised land, they are encountering some hardships. Regardless of if you if you know Jesus or not, you're going to face hardships in life. But Jesus is the one that will get you through those hardships. And so it is so important that you keep persevering, that you keep walking, that you keep fighting. You know, um, when I uh, first became a Christian, uh, I took this vow of celibacy and I said, like, I'm not going to date any, well, of course, the celibacy is no sex until marriage. But I also said that I didn't want to date anybody for an entire year because I wanted to grow in the Lord. Isn't it interesting that when you start growing, everybody from your past wants to pull you back? I literally had this guy that I left because I wanted to grow in God. I left him. I said, I, I got to break up with you. I just really want to grow in God. And he starts texting me within a matter of months, starts hitting me up on Facebook, inviting me out to lunch. And, you know, when you're in a season of, of like just not dating anybody, you're in a season of being single, like it can be tempting to want to go back. And what I did, I just said, hey, respectfully, I am not interested. And he said, why not? Can I just take you out? Like we're just friends. I said, absolutely not. I, I don't owe you an explanation. I said, let's just leave it at that. My answer is final. My answer is no. See, I knew what I was fighting for. I knew why I didn't want to go back to him because I knew that he wasn't going to pull me closer to the Lord. He was going to pull me away from the Lord. And I was determined to grow in God. And I wanted to receive everything that God had for me. And I knew that if I went back, I wouldn't receive those things. You know, just like the children of Israel. See, there's a few reasons. I have three reasons why they wanted to go back and so the first reason is this they lacked faith you know Hebrews 11 1 teaches us that faith is being sure of what you are hoping for and certain of what you do not see so when they left the land of slavery and they were going into the promised land they uh simply they lacked faith they forgot that God had done so many incredible miracles. They forgot that they were going on to the promised land. So when you're in your season of waiting, how's your faith? Do you believe that God is going to come through for you? Do you know the heart and the character of God, that God wants to bless you, that God wants to prosper you, that God wants to see you married? He wants to be there on your wedding day, which by the way, when you wait for the Lord, it is the most beautiful thing. Do not go back. I felt the presence of the Lord when my husband proposed to me. I felt the presence of the Lord on our wedding day. Like God wants to be there. He is your heavenly father and he wants to show up for you. So you, sometimes you just have to keep, reminding yourself, God is faithful. I'm going to get through this. God has a great man in store for me. God has a great woman in store for me. Keep persevering. So the second thing with the children of Israel, the reason they wanted to go back is that they lacked vision. See, the book of Proverbs teaches us that uh, God says, my people perish for lack of vision. When you don't have a vision for your life, you will always settle. When you don't know why you are waiting, you will settle. When when you don't know that, you know, your life and your marriage are, like when you don't see it as, hey, my marriage is supposed to be purposeful. My marriage is supposed to glorify God. If you don't see that for your life, then you are going to perish. You are going to settle. And so you need to have a vision. The children of Israel, they didn't have a vision. For them, it was just like, well, life's hard. Let's just go back. The vision should have been, we're going to go to the promised land. And our families are going to prosper. We're going to do great there. But they didn't have that vision. So they wanted to settle. Uh, the third thing that I would say is uh, that they forgot about God's faithfulness. This one to me is mind blowing. And I say this because, hello, children of Israel. God parted the Red Sea so that you could walk through it. He made manna fall from the sky. Like you saw miracles that some of us in our day will, most of us in our day will never see. Yet you forgot his faithfulness. You forgot how he delivered you from the land of Egypt, the land of slavery. Your God is a good God and he is faithful. But how did you forget it? And maybe that's some of you to here today. You've been growing weary in the weight. And, and that's why you've got the single course today. 
because you're growing weary and you're forgetting how faithful God is. You know, one way that I continue to remind myself of God's faithfulness is I do a lot of journaling and I can flip through my journals and just see the amazing, um, crazy amounts of times that God has showed up for me in my life. I mean, I have seen God heal. I have seen God restore. I have seen God free me of a drug addiction. He delivered me out of the porn industry. I mean, I continue to remind myself of God's faithfulness. You know, Psalm 77, 11, the psalmist says that I will recall all that you have done. You know, and then other verses teach us, uh, teach us to meditate on God's word day and night. There's a reason for this. Because like the old saying goes, where your focus goes, the power flows. And so if all you're focused on is getting into a relationship, then you're going to settle. But if you are focused on glorifying God and you are focused on Jesus and you are focused on, uh, on all of God's faithfulness, then you are going to persevere. 1 Peter 1.14 says this. It says, don't slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own desires. You didn't know any better then. You didn't know any better then, but you know better now. Hey, when you are in this waiting season, whatever you do, don't go back. You need to ignite your faith by spending time in the presence of the Lord. You need to remind yourself of the vision like Habakkuk uh, 2 says, to write the vision and make it plain. Remind yourself of why you're waiting and keep persevering. Keep recalling God's faithfulness and surround yourself with positive godly people who are going to pray for you and encourage you and not let you settle. Because there were times when I was waiting in my year, it was like, oh God, why did I make this vow of celibacy? Why, or not celibacy. Why did I make this vow where I'm not going to date anybody for a whole year? I'm lonely. Like I want to date somebody. But it was in that season where I had accountability partners that would remind me, no, Brittany, you're not going to go back. You're going to keep fighting. Remember, God has a man of God in store for you. And you need that. You need a circle of people who will encourage you and remind you because we're only human. And sometimes we will get a little lonely. Sometimes we will feel tempted. The temptation is not the sin. It's falling into the temptation that is, is the sin. And so... Friends, I just believe that you are going to persevere. I believe that you are going to wait. And I believe that you are going to have a beautiful God-ordained marriage. Whatever you do, don't go back. I love you guys so much. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed today's lesson and we pray it was a blessing for your life. My husband and I just recently founded lovealwaysministries.com and it is a 501c3 nonprofit organization and we are dedicated to helping people discover God's love, walk in their mm. calling, and leading through purity. Yes. And we want to continue to just give out all of this free content for you guys. And so in order to do so, our ministry is run off donations. And so we ask that if this uh, video has blessed you today that you just head on over to lovealwaysministries.com slash donate and give today because we cannot do what we do without you. Hey guys, we love and we appreciate you. Thank you so much for all that you do. We're continually praying for you right here at Love Always Ministries. God bless you.